And we head to Tunisia now, where labor unions continue to complicate the government's talks with the IMF over a bailout. Now, the country's powerful UGTT labor union said on Monday that it has no deal with the government on a plan to reform subsidies and publicly owned companies, a move which it says could lead to street protests over any painful changes. Now, price increases and food shortages have already spurred some protests in recent weeks against the government. The government is currently in talks with the International Monetary Fund for a rescue package that could unlock further bilateral aid for the country to help it avert a looming crisis in public finances. Well, the IMF wants the UGTT, UGTT on board with economic reforms needed to secure that deal. Now, earlier, I spoke to Fadel Kaboub, who is an associate professor of economics at Denison University in Ohio. And I started by asking if an IMF deal is possible without a plan with unions on reforming those subsidies and, of course, state-owned enterprises. Take a look. Well, unfortunately, from an IMF perspective, these reforms are absolutely critical to the, the standard IMF uh, set of demands that they impose on countries like Tunisia. Uh, they want to phase out and completely eliminate eventually food subsidies, uh, fuel subsidies, and they want the state to get out of the economy by essentially privatizing all state-owned enterprises uh, and as a precondition for for the loans that the IMF would provide to to Tunisia and from from the union's perspective from the Tunisian population perspective working class perspective that is just uh, uh, unacceptably painful uh given the, the 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 level of dependency that the Tunisian economy has on these food and and fuel subsidies and given how interconnected this is with the rest of the economic structure on fuel subsidies uh, that support the, the the hotel industry and the tourism industry. And it's even more dependent on food subsidies because the tourists that we bring to Tunisia are also consuming subsidized food. So it's a, it's a whole interconnected piece that doesn't just touch one particular segment of the economy that you can um, you know, manage to, to satisfy. It's about rethinking the entire economic structure of the Tunisian economy. And that's something that Unfortunately, the IMF, the government, and the unions have not made any significant progress in thinking about a new economic structure that gives the Tunisian economy the resilience needed. And for me, that starts with investing in food sovereignty, investing in renewable energy sovereignty, the two basic pillars of the economy, before you even begin talking about removing subsidies and, and privatizing state-owned enterprises. Mm -hmm. Well, then one has to wonder what's going to happen uh, with this IMF deal, because the IMF has been clear that it wants unions on board uh, with their plan. But the unions are threatening to go on strike uh, if they go ahead with these reforms. So what do you expect will happen with that deal then? And how critical is a deal with the IMF for Tunisia right now? Well, from Tunisia's perspective, the, the, any external uh, assistance, whether it's from the IMF or, or other uh, international agencies or, or, or partner countries, is absolutely critical given how dependent Tunisia is on food imports, on, on uh, fuel imports. So the IMF is always sensitive to the political stability and social stability aspect. Uh, so they will not compromise on the deal but they will find alternative ways to um, you know, nudge other countries, other agencies to provide last minute assistance for food imports and, and, and energy imports. A good example is what the IMF managing director said uh, earlier today in, in Saudi Arabia about food insecurity in the region and encouraging uh, Arab countries and other uh, development agencies, agencies, including the Islamic Development Fund, uh, the Islamic Development Bank, to provide assistance to improve food security for countries like Tunisia. Mm -hmm. So even if the IMF doesn't provide the cash because they refuse to accept the, the current agreement between the government and, and the unions, the IMF will find a way 
to nudge other agencies and other partner countries to provide that last minute assistance. But it's very clear that the IMF will not compromise on these issues because they've compromised in the past with, with 10 uh, consecutive governments since 2011. And they're just ideologically wedded to this economic model uh, and are not willing to, to compromise.